Welcome to the first highlight show of the 2023-24 edition of the AFC Champions League. The West region is packed with superstars after huge investment. A very exciting tournament is guaranteed. Let's have a look at the action on match day one. Group A gets going for Uzbekistan's Paktakor with a game against Alain of the United Arab Emirates at the Bunyodkor Stadium. Paktakor will be looking to make up for a group stage exit in last season's competition. The 15-time champions of Uzbekistan are captained by Serbian veteran Dragan Seran. Right winger Azizbek Tugan Bayev scored in a thrilling 5-4 win at the end of last year's group stage. It ultimately wasn't enough. For the inaugural AFC Champions League winners Alain, it's a return to the groups for the first time since 2020. Leading the line on match day one, Togolese striker Kodjo Fordo Laba. The visitors Alain work it nicely down the left and they'll cut it back into the box. It's played over the top by the striker Laba in the end. Nice glimpse of goal for Alain early on though. Guests coming forward again. Come out of the blocks quickly here and they found the back of the net quickly too. It was down the wing for Bandar al -Akhbabi. It was a good cross and it was a good finish as well. Kodjo Laba winning the race to the near post. Paktakor starting to mount a bit of a response here, the home side. They've got it back to Saifiev. Farouk Saifiev forcing a decent save from the Alain keeper. It's pushed away to safety. That's the best we've seen from the hosts in the first 20 minutes. Alain, the attack should have been ended there, but they've got it back and it's through the defence and it's through into the net once again. Khalid Al-Balushi calm in front of goal. Paktakor really should have got the ball away, but once Laba picked it up, there was a huge hole in the defence for Khalid. And it comes just as Paktakor was starting to get a foothold in the game. Laba, with space outside the area, finds Kaku over on the right-hand side, goes for the placed shot. That wasn't far away from adding another. Alain looking well up for this on their Champions League return. Paktakor still looking for something. They've been good at the end of this first half, and that's a really good ball into Kamrobikov. Side netting only. Well, the home team have come close a few times at the end of this first half, and they might have a chance to go close again. That was so close, and it's back off the post and into the arms of the keeper. Seram, the captain, was right there. The young defender, Alton, was there too. What a let-off for Alain in stoppage time. 2-0 the half-time score. Paktakor with a lot to do after the break. Sabir Kojaev. Goes down the left, Tosiran slices the shot horribly. That sums up Paktakor's efforts to some extent. Chances, but no end product yet. Kaku Alain plays it into the middle, off the crossbar, and where's that going? Not over the line, crucially. Keeper Kuvatov with a slice of luck. How did that stay out? Alain have had fewer attacks in this second half, but they're still looking dangerous. Laba here, will he take on the defender? He doesn't need to! How about that for a finish? Laba's having one of those days and he just picked out the corner as simple as that. Alain cruising now and the Paktikor fight back just hasn't materialised. The hosts determined to get one back at least in the last 10 minutes. Kozokonov just wide again, you can't fault the efforts. But there's no end product still. Chance to get across over. It's headed down to Kamarobikov. Good position and well smothered by the Alain keeper. Alain just will not be beaten today. Alfred Schreider's team executed their game plan perfectly despite the best efforts of Paktakor. It's Alain who take the three points on match day one. They play Ahal next up. Paktakor will look to improve when they take on Al Fayha. The final score from the Bunyodkor Stadium though. Paktakor nil. Alain 3 after a brilliant brace from Kojo Fordulaba. Debutants Alfea of Saudi Arabia make the trip to Turkmenistan to face Ahal FC with both sides wanting to start the campaign with three points. Ahal are struggling domestically, having won their domestic league for the first time last season. Al Fea shot to Al Hilal in the Saudi Kings Cup to reach the AFC Champions League. Ahal will be looking to Gurbanov up front to score the goals for them. 
Alfea her former Rangers striker Sakala leading the line. The other game in Group A ended 3-0 to Alalim, away to Pachtakor. Ahal with a positive start after only two minutes. The low ball comes in, and the shot finally from Togaev, but it's over the bar. Now six minutes in, and you can see it's a physical encounter. The shot from the edge of the box is deflected to Dovran Poyamanoidov, but that's off target. 25th minute now, and a corner for Alfea. And it's swung in, and Rashidi sends it well over the bar. A game of very few chances with defences on top at the moment. Alfea trying to end the half on a high. There's a nice ball out towards the right-hand side here. Swung over, the keeper punching clear, and then thundered back in by Sakala. And it breaks for him again. And it's deflected out, the chance is gone for the Saudi team. You can see here all hands to the pump for the Ahal defence. As initially it was cleared by the keeper, back in again. And once again with the shot, before it's deflected out. Goalless here at half-time, hoping for better in the second as Alfea continue from where they left off at the end of the first half. Sakala with a rasping shot in and is very well dealt with by Yaparov. Superbly cutting across the ball to try and deceive the keeper here. And at the other end, 51st minute. Ahal coming forward with Menace as Tagayev turns and thunders in a wonderful shot into the top corner. 1-0 to the home side. It's a phenomenal strike from all of 30 yards. Tagayev lighting up the AFC Champions League here. One of the finest goals on match day one. Alfea now really running out of time and they're getting more and more desperate. As Ricardo Ryla lines one up. And it just slices wide off the post. 98th minute, and one last chance for the away team. The cross comes in, and that's easy for the keeper. Full time, a hard fought 1 0 win for Ahal. A wonder goal enough for them to take the three points against Alfea. On match day two in Group A, Ahal go to Alain, while Alfea are at home to Pachtakor at the start of October. Alain got a big 3-0 win against Pachtakor to go top of Group A from the start. Ahal of Turkmenistan ground out a 1-0 win against Alfea to boost their confidence. The two losing sides, Alfea and Pachtakor, play each other in Riyadh on match day two, as Alain play host to Ahal. Group B and AFC Champions League newcomers Al Fasali of Jordan welcome FC Nazef of Uzbekistan, who made it to last year's round of 16. Both teams will be looking for three points to kickstart their campaign. The first chance falls to Nazaf. Space on the right-hand side to deliver a pinpoint cross. Mateus. He was able to generate the power and he was narrowly past the post. Good effort from the Brazilian into the 19th minute, that's sloppy, and it's charged down, Mateus is through again, and that's a fantastic covering tackle from Anas Bani Yassin. The veteran defender getting back to snuff out the danger. Al-Fasali on the attack. The space here for the shot shifts it to the right, and that's narrowly wide. I think Nemetov would have had that covered. Corner sent deep into the danger area, oh, and that's broken. Unlucky there, Mohamed Al Soliman just unable to direct that towards the goal. Nil nil then as we go into half time, chances at a premium and defences on top. 
into the second half we go. And it's an explosive attack. Arif El Hajj bearing down on goal, gets a shot away. Good stop from Nemetov again. Well, Al Fasali came flying out of the blocks in the second half. And this was a good chance to get themselves in front. Nasaf having to do some defending here. Short corner. Amin Al Shanaina looking to deliver the ball. Works a bit of space, delivers it, lofted. Oh, and that was just past the post. Mohamed Al Aikish with the header. And that almost broke the deadlock. Here's Amin again with a curling effort. Sees it just narrowly past the far post. Nasef with a corner, sending it long. The header's there, and it's a fantastic save. Brilliant reflex save from the goalkeeper, just getting a hand to it. And the defender's able to hack that one clear. Stanojevic's ball in, and it's saved, and the follow-up is there. Second bite of the cherry, and unable to find the back of the net. And another chance goes begging. Will anyone be able to grab a winner in the late stages? Another deep cross and the header, and it's tipped over. Great reflex save again. Mehdi Kali to the rescue. Stanojevic with another free kick, this time direct. And it's blocked on the line again from the goalkeeper. Strong right hand. Big pressure now from FC Nasaf as we go into the final stages of the game, deep into injury time. There's a break down the left-hand side. Nazuliev squares it. Abdurakhtov coming forwards. That's a great turn. Finds the bottom right hand corner and he's grabbed a winner. FC Nasav snatching a victory in the very final moments of the game. The ball cut back in. It's a brilliant turn. And then with the left foot rifles it into the bottom right hand corner to win the game for FC Nasaf. It's a bitter defeat for Al Fasali, who have done so well on their opening game of the AFC Champions League. But it is. FC Nassaf, who take all three points, final score 1-0. A tough start in Group B for Qatar's Al Sadd as they face Sharjah of UAE. Al Sadd failed to qualify from their group last season and are looking for redemption, while Sharjah had to come through two qualifying rounds to reach this stage. Uriba will be pulling the strings in midfield for Al Sadd with Afif, Bunija and Plata ahead of him. Sharjah will be looking for some very strong defending away from home. However, in attack, Pjanic and Kayo are the star men for them, looking to cause problems for Al Sadd. Al Faisali and FC Nazar for the other sides in Group B. A highly physical game so far, right on the half hour, a free kick comes in, and there's a header there from Mohamed Wad, but it ends up on the roof of the net. Not too much action so far in this one in front of goal. Just a couple of minutes later, now a chance for Sharjah to come forward. The ball falls to the feet of Kayo, he clips it in, and that's a brilliant reaction from the goalkeeper to get it away. Basham, a very relieved man to see it go to safety. Now up to the other end, as Al Sad come forward now. It's Afif, and Al Haidos pulls the trigger, forcing the first save of the game. It remains goalless here with 38 minutes gone. An end-to-end -end encounter suddenly now as Sharjah perhaps have the chance. As Kayo bends one in, but just sends it off target. Under a bit of pressure there from the defender. As it's nil-nil at half-time, a slow burner, but potential for an excellent second half. An early corner then for Shaja as Pjanic swings it in, and Kyle can't find the target again. Should have done better. 51st minute, and Afif at the other end now. It's rolled to Al Haidos to drive it, and it just goes over the bar. The goalkeeper, though, not too worried about this one. Ten minutes into the second period, and Al Sada really pushing on. Here's another chance for them, potential for a penalty there. And certainly that one. Shahjar unable to clear their lines, 
And Plata goes down, definitely a penalty. Algerian Buneja steps up. And he drives it wide. Somehow this game remains goalless with just over half an hour remaining. Al Sad now spring forward midway through the half as Pedro Miguel forces the save at the near post and then on the rebound, Ariba goes for it, but it bounces over the top. Al Hosani with the save initially. Al Sad still trying here with time running out as Pedro blasts one across and Buneja just can't connect. It's not been his evening at all tonight. As late on in the game, Afif pulls a trigger one last time. As the game ends, goalless. Al Sad could well rue that penalty miss from Buneja, but it's a welcome point for Sharja. Upcoming for these two teams, Al Sad travelled to Nazaf at the beginning of October, while Sharja host Al Faisali. FC Nazaf of Uzbekistan got off to a great start, beating Jordan's Al Faisali. Al Sad and Sharja got a point each in a goalless draw. On match day two, Sharja host Al Faisali, while Al Sad travel to FC Nazaf. Saudi Pro League champions Al Ittihad are looking to start off strongly in Group C as they open their AFC Champions League campaign at home in Jeddah against Uzbekistan's AGMK. Coach Nuno Espirito Santos, Al Ittihad were already a strong side. Now, after a number of high-profile signings made this summer, they're expected to challenge for the title in the Champions League. They go in as big favourites against a side who overcame two qualifying games to reach the group stage for just the second time in the history of AGMK FC. Captain Sanjar Tursunov leads out the team for just their second group stage campaign. A oh, loose pass from AGMK and it's picked up in space by Romarinho for Al Ittihad. He finds Mohana Chankiti, shot safe, but it's still loose in the penalty area and it's into the back of the net too. Abderazak Hamdala found Haroon Kamara and Kamara made it 1-0 in the 11th minute. A little unfortunate for the goalkeeper of AGMK. Egashev made the save, but AGMK could not clear the danger and Haroon Kamara made them pay. Kante, that's floated over beautifully for Kamara, lifted up, he tees himself up, shot blocked, it's loose in the box again, and just a few minutes after the first goal, they score in similar circumstances. Romarinho with the goal this time around. Once again, AGMK make the first block, but the loose ball falls their way and the hosts are clinical. AGMK with a rare foray forward here, but they've been caught and they could be done on the counter here. Three players forward for Ali Tahad, make it two, and just the goalkeeper to beat. It should be 3 0. It isn't 3 0. Unbelievable. Well, that was just far too casual. Hamdala should have gone himself, waited for support, but full marks to Botagali Egashev for saving his team there. Goes played back for Hamdala in the area, tries to go down to the byline. Surely he was caught there. Still shot Ahmed Aliyev with a risky challenge, to say the least. They've had a look at it on VAR. Referee Kimura does indeed point to the spot. Romerinho to add a third for Al Ittihad. No problem from the penalty spot. Sends the keeper the wrong way and just buries it for the third. That's seven shots on target to nil for Al Ittihad. It's been a powerful display from the Saudi Pro League champions in the first half. AGMK coming forward, it should have been cut out. Ruben Sanchez wide across goal. The best chance for the away side to pull one back. They've been on the front foot since the break, but no reward just yet. Ruben Sanchez shouldn't really have been allowed through there. A sign of the improvement from AGMK in the second half. Tempo slowed down, Ali Tahad looking for a fourth. Camera giving it a go from a tight angle, nothing on for him there. 15 minutes left to play. It's been almost at walking pace in the second half with the comfortable advantage. But too difficult to add another from the angle. Deep into the four minutes of stoppage time added on here. Shot saved, keeper's got down low to it. AGMK should be able to get it away, but Al Itahad win it back in the penalty area. Al Shamgani over on the left-hand side has a go. It was Al Amri with the shot in the end. 
Hashem Rani played it down the left side. And that should be that at the end of these four added minutes. Another shot from an angle away off the woodwork. A very satisfying start overall to Group C from Al Itihad. A comfortable 3 0 scoreline and a chance to take it pretty easy after the break, in all honesty. AGMK improved a lot for the second half as the hosts eased off. But AGMK were well beaten today in Jeddah. They'll play Air Force Club at home on match day two. Al Itihad take three points ahead of their next game away at Sepahan FC. Final score on match day one Al Itihad 3, AGMK 0. A big clash in Group C as Air Force Club of Iraq host Islamic Republic of Iran Sepahan with both dreaming of success despite being drawn in a tough group alongside Al Itihad and AGMK. Ali Jazim and Iduku are the danger men for Air Force Club who haven't qualified from the group stage in five attempts. While Sepahan have had an excellent start to their domestic campaign and see Mahanlu and Asadi lead the line. A wonderful atmosphere in the stadium coming into this one as the tension mounts coming towards kickoff. Air Force Club have made the better start here as we see them win the ball in midfield in the eighth minute. It's just clipped over the top towards Ahmad Zadeh Baruki and he sees his shot well saved and then it drops just wide. Early frustrations here for the home team. Now the 24th minute as we see a counter-attack building here down the left-hand side for Air Force Club. Achu could be in, just checking back here, gets the shot in and it's another save from the Sepahan keeper. What a golden opportunity for Air Force Club to take the lead. But just a couple of minutes later, they push forward again. The ball down the left for Ali Jazim. A lot of work for him to do here, but he dances into the penalty area, takes a shot on, and it's a brilliant finish. Finally, that's 1-0 to the club from Iraq, and it's thoroughly deserved as well. A lovely curling effort past the goalkeeper. Sipahan now looking to make an almost immediate reply as the ball is played in. There's chaos in the box, and it's lashed into the roof of the net by Dan Ashra. Let's have another look at this. The ball is bouncing around everywhere and the big defender rifles it home. There's a lengthy VAR check for this one. And in the end, it is allowed no offside. That's 1-1. And now perhaps a late chance in the half for Sipahan. As we see, great skill there from Azadi. And it's beaten away by Hamid. Danashra on the follow-up. And there's a double save here from Hamid, saving his team as we go in at half-time, deadlocked at 1-1. This one is wide open. Neither side have been that willing to commit men forward in a tight second half. And suddenly we see the chance of Sipan, and it's brilliantly finished by Mohamed Horbani. Karimi with the ball through, and that is absolutely delightful. 2-1 to the away side, midway through the second half. Now the 73rd minute and suddenly a chance and range here for Achu. The layoff here from Abdul Rahim after the spillage by the goalkeeper. But he slices wide with the goal at his mercy. Ten minutes later and Kazim now with the opportunity, sending it wide with his left foot. The home side pushing forward more and more now. This is a clever one too. Ali Jazim is in and it's into the top corner for 2-2. He slams it home, the late leveller, with his second of the game. What drama here between Air Force Club and Sipahan as it ends all square. Both sides get a point apiece and a pulsating encounter. Next up for these two in early October, Air Force Club travel to AGMK, while Sipahan hosts big spenders Al Itihad. Al Itihad cruised to a 3-0 victory over AGMK of Uzbekistan. Air Force Club and Sipahan played out a dramatic 2-2 draw. Match day two's fixtures 
see AGMK at home to Air Force Club, while Al Itihad go to Iran to face Sepihan. The big kickoff in the AFC Champions League sees India's Mumbai City host Iranian outfit Nasaji Mazandaran, who are making their debut in the competition, having lifted the Hasvi Cup last season. Group D also includes Al Hilal and Navbahor, so these two will want to get off to a good start. Look out for Pereira Diaz and Chang Te of Mumbai City. On the other hand, Mazaheri may be a busy man in goal for Nasaji Mazandaran. Mumbai City just missed out on a place in the round of 16 last season and they will be hoping to go on the attack from the off. Indeed, that is what they do. The ninth minute here. This is some lovely play from Pereira Diaz and the chance for Chang Te. He just slides it wide. Very good opening opportunity for the home team here. Into the 18th minute and conditions have worsened here. Nasaji Mazandaran keeper Mazaheri with a poor clearance and he could be in trouble here as the header comes in from his defender Mohamed Zadeh. And it's nearly an own goal. This is slapstick in the rain. Into the 34th minute and Nasaji Mazandaran have got their composure now. This is a lovely slide rule pass from Zamerahan and it's the opening goal for Ezan Husseini. That is a wonderfully constructed goal for 1-0 to the away side. And on their debuts, they have got their first goal as well. Absolutely clinical. Coming towards half-time and the tails are up for the away team. More slick play here from them. The shot coming in from Zameran. And it's blocked by the Spanish defender Thierry for Mumbai City. One last chance perhaps in the first half for Mumbai City here. Looking to end the half on a high. The cross comes in and that's a spectacular effort on the volley by Bipin Singh. He's so unlucky to see it fly off target here. It's a well-controlled shot. Half-time 1-0 to Nasaji Mazandaran. Mumbai City will hope to improve their performance in the second half. But it's Nasaji Mazandaran with the first chance of the second period. This free kick is whipped in, and Mohamed Zadeh, it's just the header off the bar there, and that's a big let-off for Mumbai City. It's a perfect free kick, and he's almost unmarked there, the big defender. Just over an hour gone, and it's still the away team piling on the pressure here. As we see some hard work coming in from Esmaili, and the ball comes in, and there's the second goal. The tap in for Azadi. The error here from the defender Mishra of Mumbai City is pounced upon. And they deserve to extend their lead here. Nasaji Mazandaran. 77th minute and the Indian side really committing players forward now. As the ball might fall for them here. Vikram Singh with the effort. Hammering it across the six yard area but no one could get the final touch on it. Let's see how close it was. It's very close to being tapped home. One final chance perhaps here for Pereira Diaz and the goalkeeper beats it away. As a full time, it is 2-0 to the debutants, Nasaji Mazandaran, and they've done it. An excellent 2-0 win over a Mumbai City side who never really got going. The next match is for these two. Mumbai City face Navbahor away from home at the start of October. Nasaji Mazandaran hosts star-studded Al Hilal. Group D gets underway with last season's AFC Champions League runners-up Al Hilal of Saudi Arabia taking on Uzbekistan's Navbahor at the King Fahd International Stadium. While the hosts aim for a third AFC title, their visitors are taking part in their first group stage campaign for over a decade. Georges Jesus' Al Hilal start with, amongst others, new signings Ruben Neves, Malcolm Neymar and Alexander Mitrovic in attack. Navbahor youngster Ostan Urganov is the club's top scorer in Uzbekistan's Pro League this season. Can he make an impact in a tough match day one fixture in the Champions League? 
Nath have acquitted themselves well so far in the first 20 minutes defensively. That's Jamshid Boltabayev with a great pass for Uranov. Audacious lob attempt, but it was always heading up and over the frame of Mohamed al Oase's goal. A reminder to Al-Hilal, Nath do carry a threat. Good ball in, Mitrovic, that's a brilliant turn in the box. Mitrovic fires it across the face of goal. He thinks it took a touch on the way through, but whatever happened, that was not too far off target from the Serbian striker. Good free kick position after half an hour for Al Hilal. Neymar and Malcolm are over it. Neymar takes it. Nice idea going low under the wall. Didn't quite catch the right contact. And it's an easy gather for Yusupov in goal. 76% possession, but just the one shot on target from Al Hilal in that first half. Goalless at the break. Navbahor with a chance to break at pace here. It's Ismailov looking for the first sight of goal in this second half. Ismailov, good ball into Tabatadze. Tabatadze does well, Tabatadze does brilliantly. What a moment for the visitors at the King Fahd International Stadium. They have defended resolutely, and my word, they've got their reward at the other end. Tabatadze, who scored twice in a domestic cup game the other day, has now etched his name into AFC Champions League history for Navbahor. Well, this would be a shock if it stayed 1-0. Al-Hilal throwing everything at this, now they trail. Ruben Neves with the dipping volley. Yusupov tips it over. What a surprise that just two minutes after falling behind, Al-Hilal goes so close. Al-Hilal on the right of the penalty area. That's the last ditch challenge, and it's a good one to get it away, but it'll be crossed back in for Mitrovic. It does not cross the line. What do they have to do to find a way past this Navbohor team? Mitrovic with a bit of space, had to earn it. We couldn't beat the keeper. Late on in this game. Oh, is there another chance for Navajo here to double the lead? Good ball through. Really big chance and a really big save. Yakshiboyev was free, in on goal, and Alois comes up with a top draw bit of keeping to keep Al Hilal in touch. Early cross played into Mitrovic. That is a world class stop. Wow, seven minutes into the 14 added, and Mitrovic is inches away from finding the leveller. Al Hilal being a little bit more patient now as Navbahor looked tired in stoppage time. Good work down the right hand side. Albalai is in the box, and Albalai buries the header. A hundred minutes into this extraordinary game, it's heartbreak for Navbahor and relief for Al Hilal. Finally, they find space to beat the defence. There is still time for Neymar to take the 12th corner. Keeper's nowhere near that. Oh, he needed the last ditch challenge and the block. That would have been so cruel on Samville Babayan's away side. Well, tactically, they played that game almost to perfection. They took their chance when it came. Al Hilal looked frustrated and rattled, but 14 minutes added was enough for them to get the draw. They'll both have to settle for a point after a breathless match. 1 1, the final score here. It was a match day of surprises in Group D. Nasaji Mazandaran lead the way after a 2-0 win over Mumbai City. Star-studded Al Hilal could only draw 1-1 with Navbahor. On match day two, Mumbai City make the trip to Uzbekistan to play Navbahor. Nasaji Mazandaran faced the challenge of Al Hilal. The champions of Tajikistan take on the champions of Qatar in Group E. It's FC Istiklal versus Al Duhail FC in a packed Central Republican Stadium in Dushanbe. Istiklal only managed three points amongst strong competition last year, so they'll be aiming to ignite their campaign today against the Red Knights, who made it to the semi-finals last year before losing in a heavy defeat to Al Hilal. Team news for Shevrachenko's Istiklal, captain Alisher Jahalilov takes his place on the left-hand side of midfield. For Hernan Crespo's Al Duhail, the game comes too soon for Philip Coutinho, so all focuses on captain Al Moez Ali, who lines up alongside Maturi in attack. And the opening of the game, a long ball towards Moez. But Gogoa snuffs out the danger that was good defending. Moez with half a chance to get in behind the defence before the door was closed. Into the 26th minute, and Al Duhail on the back foot. And a shot from distance from Senin Sabai. Both defences working hard. 
and the shot from distance was all that he could master. It's good work on the right-hand side, and the ball will break nicely to Moez in the box, and he just can't bend it into the top right-hand corner, but that's better from Al Duhail. Chances were few and far between at this stage of the game, but there would be one more before half-time. Ball flicked on, and it will fall nicely to Sultan Al Break, and his shot rises over the bar. Fairness, it was only half a chance for the Qatari left back. And just before half time, there's another chance that fell Al Duhail's way. Moez just slicing across the ball. Ibrahima Bamba had done so well to set up the chance, but the chance went begging. So into half time at nil nil. And both teams will be looking for their shooting boots in the dressing room as we come out for the second half. And it's Istakol that start the half on the front foot. Esoni Pan Shanbi lining up a long distance effort. Yeah, fails to test the keeper on this occasion. It's better from Istakol who start with real attacking intent. Minutes later, a free kick from the captain. Jalilov fails to test Salah Zakaria. It was a long distance effort from the captain who's taking things into his own hands, trying to break the deadlock. And then into the 75th minute. A looping cross from Kim falls to Sultan Al Break and his shot's deflected. It comes back off the woodwork and is cleared. Agonizingly close to putting them into the lead. And with 95 minutes on the clock, a ball forwards to Abdulaziz. His shot skewed wide. That was the final action of the night. It had been a hard fought battle. Nil nil the result. The points are shared. Next up, FC is to Klol, travel to star studded Al Nassar, while Al Duhail travel to Iran to face Persepolis. It's a battle between two teams with real title ambitions in Group E as 15 time Iranian champions Persepolis host Saudi Pro League side Al Nasser. Persepolis, who have to play this tie behind closed doors despite massive interest from fans in Tehran, are AFC Champions League runners up from 2018 and 2020 when they knocked out Al Nasser en route to the final. Al Nasser have made no secret of their big ambitions for this campaign after securing several high profile new signings. They struck late to get past Shabab Al Ahli of Dubai in the playoff round. And now Cristiano Ronaldo leads them out at the legendary, if empty, Azadi Stadium on match day one. Al Nasser with a pinpoint long ball down the right, and that's a good cross in as well towards Sadio Mane. Sultan Al Ghanam with the cross. Mane got a touch, but it was off target. First chance goes the way of the guests after 10 minutes. Al Nasser have it with Sadio Mane again on that right flank. He'll get the cross in, it's headed clear, but it's going to come back into the box here for Ronaldo. Oh, quick reactions to get the power on that header. But if it had been on either side, then we may well have seen the opening goal of the game there. Pinball in the box, but the Ramvand was in the right place. Oh, Persepolis take the throw in quickly down the left wing to Zahedi. Goes for the square ball across the box, nobody there in the middle. Mohamed Omri was further back, but the pass left him no chance. Brozovic will carry this one over the halfway line for Al Nasser. Still going Brozovic and riding the challenge as well. He's got Mane in support, goes to Mane, Ronaldo at the back post. Good ball in again, Mane has been a real threat on the flanks in this first half. That time he was the overlap, but Ronaldo couldn't quite get on the ball. This game hasn't really come to life yet on some difficult turf. Al Nasser are on top, but we're still goalless at the break in Tehran. Ball to Ronaldo, you can hear the screams there. Studs in on the top of his foot. Milad Salak was booked already in the first half, you know. He's going to be off here. Persepolis down to 10 men with almost 40 minutes left on the clock. That could be a game changer for Al Nasser. Set pieces may be Persepolis' best hope of creating chances now. Sadeji swings it in for Zahedi just after the hour mark. Headed over the top. That's a good chance for the 10 men of Persepolis. Al Nasser on the left, sensing now that the opening goal might be in the air for somebody perhaps. Brozovic with the 1 2. Cuts it back, and Garib is there. Al Nasser break the deadlock through Abdul Rahman Garib. The shot cannoned back off two defenders, but the only thing that matters for Al Nasser is that it crossed the line eventually. Good work from Brozovic. Abdul Rahman Garib with the finish.
Under 20 minutes to play. Garib, the scorer, looks for Mohamed Kassem. That's a great touch to take the ball with him and an even better touch for the finish. Mohamed Kassem al Nahli, the fullback, nearly bursts the net there. An emphatic strike from the angle. Keeper beaten at the near post, but that was so well hit. Al Hilal really in the driving seat now. Okay, Bali onwards for Al Granam. Has a good go from the right, but it's touched away across the face of goal. Still danger, but Persepolis will blast it clear with only a couple of minutes left on the clock. Persepolis lost forward Mehdi Tarabi to an injury early on. They never really settled as an attacking force after the red card. That opened the door for Al Nasser, but it was a deserved win for the side from Saudi Arabia. Persepolis have to go away to Aldehale in two weeks' time. Al Nasser start with a win. Persepolis nil, Al Nasser two. The final score, Abdul Rahman Garib, the main man with a goal and an assist for Luis Castro's team on match day one. Uh, how was the match? I think it was a good game. Even the first half was a little bit uh, difficult for both teams, but I think uh, in, it's normal. But at the end of the day, we, we play good in the second half, we create some chance and we score two goals. I think uh, at least we, we deserve to win tonight. Uh, do you think you, uh, you can qualify it for the next round? Obviously, this is our target. We will try our best to qualify for the next round. Neither Istiklal nor Al Duhail could break the deadlock in a goalless draw. In the other game, Cristiano Ronaldo's Al Nasser picked up a 2-0 victory at Persepolis. The second match day is in early October and sees Al Nasser take on Istiklal. Al Duhail will hope for their first win against Persepolis. Cristiano Ronaldo made his debut in the AFC Champions League. Although he didn't score for his team Al Nasser, he was well involved in the play, creating chances and having a few of his own. A tackle coming in on him led to a red card. We are looking forward to his future performances in the competition.